The reason I'm doing the PLC project over there is so that loads of people who want to get into PLCs, which I hear people saying all the time to me, can get a 40 quid PLC, a, a, a cheap computer, a cheap adapter, and they can use that PLC to program real PLC code. However, I have then appreciated that PLCs are inherently much more complex than the average spark you can handle. So the plan was that I would do a different video, which is this is the start of it. Because the PLC project is quite complex and involves loads of background fuckery, it is really for people who really, really want to get into PLCs and are happy fucking around with computers, fucking around with maths, just generally fucking around. PLC people do a lot of fucking around, yeah? That's what they do. They fuck around with maths for a living. I've been wanting to do a thing on these for a while. This is the Schneider Smart Relay. I've not got loads of experience with them. I was more PLC far, to be honest, but they're very, very simple. They plug in very simply and they program very simply in logic, in ladder logic. And they also have function block diagramming, yeah? The problem I had was, for my own uses, all the ones I've got are 110 volts, which is a bit spicy to have on a bench. Spicy meat. <laughs> yeah, boy. Work that into your meat. Give your meat a good old rub. That's it. Nice and hot. Hot and spicy meat. Now, the other week, I found in the stores a 24-volt one. I was like, oh, wicked, I'll make a little test. We've got the 24-volt one. And I'll flog all these on eBay to get rid of them because... I have got a new rule in here. I'm getting rid of all my 110 stuff because I don't need it. It's, it's not suitable for training, so I'll get rid of that. Anyway, I found a 24 volt one, which was wicked. I also went and did some filming for someone on YouTube the other week. And while I was in Birmingham, Eddie was on the list of people to drop into and say hello. Now then, let's have a look what Eddie, Uncle Eddie's gathers here. Eddie's pushing these PLCs to their absolute limit in what he's using them for. Maybe he'll put a video up or we'll go and do a video of one of his heating control panels where he's pushed them, yeah, but... He proper knows his way around this stuff. And the thing about this stuff is, it's inherently accessible. The problem with it is, is this is all made by Cruzette, Cruze, and you're going to have to go and buy it. And there's no one making knockoffs. With a PLC knockoff, they're 40 quid. For this little project, you're going to have to buy a Cruzette PLC of a certain type, and we're all going to work together to do it, and I'm going to build a test rig for it. So let me just show you a load of stuff that's here that's gamma. He gave me all this. He's fucking a very, very nice man. Because I'm going to make three rigs. All the same. But with the option to spice them up a little bit. Spicy meat. Don't be frightened to give it a good squeeze. Cup your hands over and really give that a good squeeze. Let me show you what I've got and you'll understand why I'm coming from that thing. But let me introduce you to Cruze Smart Relays physically. Then Eddie, at some point, is going to introduce you to Smart Relay programming. Not in ladder, but in function block which is ladders the entry level to any sort of program of plc's and smart relays function block starts to guide you into the world of plc's so if you desperately want to do plc's that project's all going to head but this is a side project where eddie's taking care of the software for me or we're going to both take care of the software together so yeah let me show you this system and how it works in case you haven't seen it before Right then, make no mistake yeah this is an absolute haul for me and a haul for training and it was given to me gratias so Although it might get used commercially to train people on these, it is definitely going to get used in some free manner where everyone can share. So I might try and do something. At, uh, I might try. I'm going to try and deliver something at an establishment some, for some people. Yeah, we'll cross up and come to. But that's what he's giving me. I'm only going to. He's giving me loads of stuff to be fair, but I'm just going to concentrate on the smart real stuff. So let me lay it all out and go through it. Yeah, a bit at a time and show you what we've got. Here's what he's giving me. There's also a massive panel downstairs that I'm going to convert. It's, it's trend at the minute, another control system, specialist for con, um, heat controls. I'm going to convert one of these into the big control panel with the HMI for training on. These are baby PLCs, basically, they're not a thing. At its base, you have one of these modules, yeah? And on the top, you've got a positive and negative in, digital inputs, that's voltage in, and then I think some of these can be analog or digital. And at the bottom, you've got relay outputs, look, that just are just switches, basically. If you want to have a look, this is a Cruzette... Much simpler number, XB26, I think. That's the add-on module. That's where you add modules on. So that basically takes voltage, inputs, and does outputs. It's that fucking easy. That's a similar one, but it's got less inputs and less outputs, but it does have the screen. 
So you can get these with a screen or whatever. The good thing is if you go on the catalogue for these on the Cruzette website, you'll find they're all listed. You can download all the instructions. And amazingly, which is absolutely get you going straight away, you don't need none of this. You don't fucking need none of this. I'm not sure about the screens, but all the PLCs, you can download the software and fully simulate. So you could download the software and use it like an electronics package where you simulate the stuff going off. So straight away now off the bat, if you want to, you could download the software for the screen and the PLC. I know you can simulate the PLC. I'm not sure if you can simulate the screen and make a talk to each other, but simulate the PLC is good enough. So there's your main module. That's what does the business, and you'll be able to look at all them on the website. Let me put all those away so we're just dealing with what's got left then. And hit the tripod. They are some programming leads. These particular ones are serial ones. So RS-232 to the bespoke plug for the system. I'm, I think you can plug those in for programming, but I do believe you can also plug those in. And I think that might be what you're plugging to the screen as well. I don't know, I'm going to check that. But they are for programming. And I think they can do comms down them to the screen. Or you can leave it in for reasons you might want to do. But they're the programming leads. Again, they will also do a USB one of those. RS-232s uh for us old men, but they'll do a USB one too. So let me get rid of those. Then we've got modules. So these are the modules. They clip into the end. So you push them in and they click in and they've got com uh, communication pins there. This particular one, the XN06, is giving you RJ45 Ethernet. I'm not sure if that's Modbus. I'm guessing it is because it's called MB485V1. So I guess it gives you Modbus and RS485, which is the same basic thing. I don't know if it does 232. That is basically give you communications protocols and you can connect that to anything. You can make it send signals and be controlled by anything with Modbus. So a more advanced PLC, one of its friends, a site network, I don't know. I'm just giving you the little rundown, but let me get rid of those. If you happen to have one of these and you suddenly decide you need a little bit more of this input or a little bit more of this output, you can then get these. That one XRO6 is a 24 volt AC input and you get four extra inputs. And while you're at it, it gives you two extra outputs. And they just click on. You ping that little plate off there and it clicks in and extends it. You can't then extend that one. That's all you get. But you, you build them to suit. So that is obviously extendable once, I believe. I don't think you are extending on extensions. Or you can't on that one anyway. So that gives you more ins and more outs. Now then, that one is exactly what I just showed you, but you get more. It's a bigger one. It's an XR10. So you get one, two, three, four, five, six inputs, and you get relay, one, two, three, four of two commons, and you can't extend the end. That's just a different type of it. So there'll be loads of different modules for different stuff. Maybe you want to change of content, stuff like that. But have a, like I said, look at the website. It'll have like a, a builder for them and tell you what every single card does. And this last two, this one's a PT100 input. A PT100 is a type of temperature sensor. And it's got a load of inputs for PT100. And on the bottom, it's got 4 to 20 milliamp inputs as well, which is 4 to 20 milliamp signals, proportional signals. So quite a powerful system, really, that it will take that in. And you'll deal with all that in function block. But yeah, PT100, so you can use it for temperatures. And then you can use it for... Well, they're inputs. I don't know if you get outputs as well. We'll have to check the uh, power from so Don't have those if you can. But I'm sure they'll do 4 20 milliamp ins and outs, as well as 0 to 10 volts ins and outs, PT100 and other temperature systems. There'll be niche cards for niche projects. And then finally, is that one. That's analog PT100 as well. So I'm guessing that does PT100s, but it does it in a weird way. And I don't know why. I'll have to look at the data sheet, but they are very powerful. You also gave me some temperature sensors, which I can incorporate to them. And some power supplies, power supplies for them. So they are going to get used. Keep the tripod again. Honestly, they'll get used shortly. If that one over there is a little bit too complex for you, you'll be able to dive onto this one over here as a stepping stone. The only problem is now is I've got two similar projects going off at the same time, but we'll have to deal with that. So the double-edged sword of this project is, now we've got two on, but also this is cheap knockoff crap. And we're having problems getting it going. But these aren't cheap knockoff crap, but you've got to buy them at retail price or search on eBay. However, you can fully simulate the software 
So that is an absolute bonus in itself. So maybe that's the solution. But yeah, we'll be going more into this. And then he's going to do some videos on the programming and that. Uh, I'm going to build a little test room into that. So I bought the bits for it. But you know how busy it all is at the minute. I don't know why everyone's gone wild. So yeah, in the meantime, go online. Look at them online. Look at the input and output card to do. Look at how they incorporate with things you've got. Download the software and have a play with it. Start on the ladder, then move on to the function block. I didn't... I didn't know how powerful they were until I went to the edit of the week and I was blown away by the function block's power and how he was utilising it for what I thought were very, very complex controls that I thought would be on the power of these. So yeah, check them out. Uh, how to press push button, motor goes A to B, hit limit switch B, goes back, hits limit switch A and stop. So just from one button press, drive a motor until it hits a limit switch and then it goes back the other way. Uh, I could probably do something like that. Yeah, I don't see why not. It doesn't so. Uh, shout out to Dixon Myers, huge fan. No idea who that is, mate. No idea. Dixon Myers. <laughs> <laughs> Like and subscribe. <laughs>